Alright guys, just a quick short tutorial for you today. We're talking about the Shape Builder tool. Now the Shape Builder tool has been a classic of Illustrator for a long time and it really is one of Illustrator's killer features. And so when Illustrator came to the iPad, I was very excited to find out that the Shape Builder tool had come along with it because it was really one of those things that we miss in a fitting designer that we would love to have there but only exists in Illustrator. And you can get the same results in a fitting designer or almost any vector editor including things like Inkscape and Assembly by using Pathfinder operations, but the Shape Builder tool is just a simpler way to do this. And so I'm just going to show you how it works on the iPad just with these circle examples. It's really pretty simple. And if you are coming from Illustrator on the desktop, it will all make sense to you. If you're new to Illustrator, it should make sense as well, but it just takes a little bit to wrap your mind around working with shapes at first if you haven't done this before. So basically, to use the Shape Builder tool, we need at least two shapes together. And so I have three sets of two circles here, and then we just need to select it. So making sure that you're on your selection tool in the top left and then dragging over the top. You select two shapes together. You have to select them or the Shape Builder tool won't work. And then along the right hand side, you're going to go down to where you find two overlapping squares. That's the symbol for the Pathfinder or the combined shapes, but it also has the Shape Builder tool in it here. So you might be looking for it on the left if you're coming from the desktop version under tools. It's not there. It's over here in the panels. And so you have to come here and choose Shape Builder Tool. Now you can do the other operations that you'd be used to doing with the Pathfinder panel. Those are right here as well. But right now we're going to use the Shape Builder Tool. And basically this allows us to choose which parts of overlapping shapes we want to keep. So we're going to start by doing a merge. So choose the Shape Builder Tool. And the Shape Builder Tool by default is in merge mode. And so you're just going to go and drag across the parts of the shape that you want to keep. So I'm just going to drag through all of these and it makes one shape. Okay, let's hit done. And then we're going to go ahead and select the next set of shapes. Go back to our Shape Builder tool. And then we wouldn't want to go into subtraction mode, which means we need to hold down on our modifier key, which I have on the right because I'm left-handed, but if you're right-handed, you might have it on the left. I'm going to go ahead and hold down on that. And that's going to put this in subtraction mode. So I just want to subtract one area. So I'm going to subtract the middle here. And you see that disappears and now it's gone. If I come along here and I click on these and I move that up, you can see that's actually empty space because it has subtracted that area. All right, lastly, let's go ahead and we will select these again. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to subtract from both sides so that I can get the leaf shape from the middle. So I'll go into the Shape Builder tool again, hold down on my modifier key, and I'll slash through the blue and I'll slash through the orange and we get this leaf shape. So that's basically it. It's in additive mode by default, but when you hold down on the modifier key, it goes into subtraction mode. And you can use this to get some very cool shapes by merging shapes together and subtracting different parts out of the shapes, and that can really help your design work. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new here. If you would like to see other tips on working in creative programs in the iPad, please let me know in the comments. And remember, I have lots of courses, which I will link to in the description of this video, that teach you how to do creative work on the iPad. So go ahead and check those out as well. All right, we'll chat in the comments, and I will see you in the next video.